Add those together, and after two years of money in, Everton has been spending the cash consistently. Across the decade, a massive four million has been spent by the Toffees. Yeah, horrible, horrible. Points deductions, failed acquisitions, and a relegation scrap. It's been a turbulent season for Toffees fans, but with a new takeover on the cards, let's take a step back and unravel the financial story behind Everton. Check out our most recent episode of Football Finance News to get the latest on Everton's current takeover bid. But way back in 2014, Everton found themselves just outside the Champions League places. However, on-field performances declined steadily, first to mid-table, then sinking further to repeated relegation battles. But despite being further hamstrung with eight points deducted for profit and sustainability breaches this year, Everton have retained their ever-present record in the Premier League. On the sidelines, Goodison Park has seen a steady turnover of managers since 2014. Martinez, Koeman, Unsworth, Allardyce, Silva, Ferguson, Ancelotti, Benitez, Lampard and now Deich. But what about off the pitch? What's been happening behind the scenes? The top line took its first jump in 2017, but having peaked in COVID distorted 2021, Everton saw its second consecutive year of revenue decline, 2023 delivering 172 million, a 5% drop on the year before. Across the division, that put Everton 15th in Premier League revenues. So what's driving the decline? Let's dig into the revenue streams. Broadcasting remained the largest segment, with 2023 delivering 116 million, a 1 million increase on the year before. Despite finishing a position lower, Premier League merit prizes overall increased, giving the Toffees a small boost. However, 2023 remains well short of revenues generated in 2017 to 19, where the club delivered consistent mid table finishes. Next, gate receipts. The 17.3 million delivered in 2023 marked Everton's best return since 2015 and 2016. 2015 benefited from Europa League football and 2016 from semi final runs to both FA and League Cups. Average Premier League gates have remained robust at 39,000, so 2023's rise is due to an uplift in season ticket pricing. Sponsorship and advertising dropped to 19 million, a 40% dive from the year before. Everton took the decision to suspend ties with Russian companies linked to Alisher Usmanov following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. This included training ground sponsor USM, reported to be 12 million a year. Everton also suspended USM's deal for naming rights to their new stadium, having previously recognised 30 million back in 2020, which bolstered that year's revenue. With the suspension, Everton are yet to announce a new naming rights partner for the stadium. But on the other hand, other commercial revenues continue to recover post-COVID. 2023 delivered 20 million, their best results since 2018. By league position, it's clear to see the improved TV deal since 2017 has fueled the major step up in Everton's top line. And on average, the Toffees have delivered 165 million in revenue. I'm guessing you pretty much enjoyed that. Well, you enjoy the outcome. Now, let's dive into profits. Having started in the black three seasons out of four, the Mashiri era has seen consistent losses since 2018, with three consecutive losses of over 100 million around COVID, and 2023 seeing a further 83 million loss. That result was the worst across the entire Premier League, and over 10 years, average losses have been 43 million. I think it's difficult to explain. But just what has caused this? Let's address this with our PL walkthrough. Let's set the timer, dry out the revenue, and dive into staff costs. Since 2014, the wage bill has steadily increased until 2021. But subsequently, Everton have brought down total staff costs. The 159 million in 2023, a 2% reduction on the year before. However, as a proportion of revenues, the top line decrease means staff costs have remained above 90% the last three years. But how is this translated onto points on the pitch? There's a clear correlation between wages per point and league position. Everton's fifth place was delivered at 1 million of staff costs per point. Downturn in performances, though, meant Everton's lowest finish saw the price of a point rise to four and a half million in wages. But after staff costs alone, there's a clear downward trajectory for the Toffees. Next up, operating costs. Having started at under 30 million, there is a step change increase in the three years from 2018 to 2020. Having appeared to reset in 2021, 
These are on the rise again, reaching 55 million in 2023. The jumps in 2018 to 2020 were in relation to the new stadium. Despite over 30 million pounds in design and other spend in those three seasons, until 2021 there was insufficient certainty for the Toffees to create a long-term asset for the new stadium. That threshold was subsequently passed, and from 2021 onwards, all new stadium spent has been capitalised. More on that later. In recent seasons, costs have increased steadily, with payouts to former managers Rafa Benitez and Frank Lampard totalling over 17 million. 2023 saw a further 3 million in payouts to other former staff, as well as the increased costs of pre- and mid-season tours and adverse foreign exchange. So at the EBITDA level, the profit picture is beginning to take shape. Third, stadium and facilities. Whilst these have increased, the total costs have remained between 6 and 7 million despite significant investment into the new stadium. Why is this? As the new stadium is not yet operational, Everton can capitalise any spend and hold it on the balance sheet as an asset under construction without releasing that cost to the p and At June 2023, when it comes to the new stadium as an asset under construction, total capitalised spend has been 386 million, which won't begin being released as a cost until Everton hosts their first games. So these will rise when Bramley Moor Dock Stadium is up and running, but as with Tottenham, these are likely allowable costs for any profit and sustainability rule calculations. Finally, we move on to transfer fees. Everton made net transfer profits in three out of five seasons until 2018, but since then, it's been heavy net costs in all years but 2022. Those early profits were driven by big ticket sales such as Marouane Fellaini, John Stones and Romelu Lukaku. Since 2019, despite further sales of Richarlison, Anthony Gordon and Luke Cadinha, the cumulative costs of players such as Jerry Mina, Andre Gomez and Ben Godfrey, among many others, has seen a hit to the bottom line. So those transfer costs have deepened operating losses in recent years. But what about financial fair play? With Everton on the receiving end of two separate points deductions, the judgments at least show us how far Everton were off from their latest three-year assessment. As a reminder, maximum losses for a three-year period are 105 million. Starting with operating profit, we must add in interest and finance costs to get losses before tax. Everton are then allowed to exclude certain costs, such as youth and community development, as well as adjustments in respect of loss of income from COVID. These aren't broken down, but as they have been reported publicly, we can get back to Everton's reported PSR losses. A total of 121.6 million, 15 million over the max threshold. But what about 2024? With the 55 million loss now out of assessment, that means Everton can only afford to lose 38 million in 2024 without further possible penalties. Whilst the sales of Moises Keane, Alex Awobi and recently Lewis Dobbin will all support this, it's possible Everton may need further sales before the 30th of June, with Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Jared Braithwaite reportedly linked with moves away. We, it's, that's our responsibility because we allowed that to happen. But Finally, let's see if cash matches with the profit picture we've just seen. As usual, we're looking at the combination of cash from operations and transfer fees. Cash from operations, influenced by EBITDA line items, matches the profit picture we've just seen. Cash came in steadily to Goodison Park until 2017, then the script flips, with cash leaving in all years but one, with heavy net spending in the last three seasons. Over the decade, Everton has spent a net 91 million. Now back to transfer fees. This highlights the difference between transfer profits and transfer cash. Everton has seen money leave Goodison Park in all years but one, despite many high ticket sales. Across the 10 years, that's a further 403 million of cash out the door. Add those together, and after two years of money in, Everton has been spending the cash consistently. Across the decade, a massive 494 million has been spent by the Toffees. Yeah, horrible, horrible. Also, we can't forget the build of the new stadium. Significant outlays for the new Bramley Moor dock ground have required another 467 million in this decade. So how much funding has been required? The Mashiri era has seen repeated capital injections of both loans and equity, with total cash funding over the last 10 years surpassing 1 billion. As at the 30th of June 2023, that had left Everton with net debt of 331 million. Though as we saw in Football Finance News last week, Everton's debts may have continued to spiral in 2024 to over 1 billion. So with the Friedkin Group takeover moving into exclusive discussions, will Everton have new owners and a more stable footing as they leave Goodison Park for their new home? Only time will tell.